Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I am going to be carrying out a service on the VFR 800. This is going to include the oil, oil filter, coolant, air filter, spark plugs. Um, I think that's about it for this video. Um, one other thing that I do want to do uh, on this is a valve clearance check. However, uh, that is beyond the scope of this video. I will make that a video all of its own. Um, so stand by for that one. That will be coming along very, very soon. Okay, in order to begin, what we need to do is we need to take all the uh, all of its clothes off, get all these panels off, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to get into into the engine, uh, looking at uh, what we're going to be doing. So, thanks for stopping by, and uh, welcome to the shed. <laughs> Right then guys, what I've done, as you can see, is I've taken all the panels off um, so that we've got access to, to the engine itself. What I'm going to be looking at first off is the um, the sump plug, which is just here, that little bad boy. And then just in here, that's the oil filter, which we're going to be removing and replacing. So, pulling the sump plug off obviously drains all the oil, and then we'll whip the... Um, whip the uh, oil filter canister off uh, and swap that out. Well, the other thing I've actually done as well is I've um, stripped the fuel tank slightly. Um, I've removed it from the mountain at the back um, and I've pulled off the breather and the overflow hoses and I've disconnected the electrical connections to the fuel pump because I do need to get access to the air box but I also want to be able to get access to the two rear spark plugs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, this gives me the ability to move the fuel tank backwards and forwards as required. So what I'll do, I can lean it up against the um, top of the screen with a nice soft cloth and there won't be any damage. But first, what I'm going to do is um, pull the sump plug off and get the oil drained. So I've got my drain pan here. So let's crack on. Right, so what I did before I um, stripped all the stuff off, I, get, I warmed the engine up only for a few minutes just to uh, just to thin the oil out slightly, just so it, uh, it comes out a bit easier. 17 mil spanner, get her on there. Pan underneath, <sighs> crack her off. Now obviously this is gonna be quite warm. Hmm. This is gonna be quite warm. So be careful with your fingers. And there we go. A little bit of the little bit of the casting around the uh, around the sump. Interesting. Could have actually uh, that could have actually broken off when the spanner tapped against it, but uh, it's not going to cause any problems. It's literally just the casting around the outside of the sump plug. But uh, yeah, mm, interesting. Okay, what I'm going to do? Let that drain off while that's draining out. I'll uh, get the filter off. Right then, next thing, oil filter. Now there's loads of methods you can use to get these off. There's strap wrenches, chain wrenches, people even stick screwdrivers through them, twist them off. It's the old filter, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. But I've got the luxury of having um, a, set of, uh, a set of tools to do it. So the, this one is the one I need for the VFR. Get her in there, pop her on, and then we can gently squeeze our ratchet in there. It's not overly tight, it shouldn't be overly tight. And you'll lose a bit of oil from the filter as well, obviously. Let's get the tool out. There we go, put that away. And it should spin off now. Now, this is the point where you get oil all over your exhaust. Um, it's not a massive drama, but just be aware that when you come to start the bike, if you don't clean it all off, you've uh, got the potential for a bit of a fire. So give it a good, give it a good clean off, you know, without being overly dramatic. 
um, you don't really want to be uh, leaving that much oil on the exhaust so what we'll do once it's finished draining off I'll just give all of this a good wipe off to get all the excess oil off um, and then we'll, uh, we'll be good to go so I'll come back to this in a couple of minutes um, and uh, it should be uh, we should be ready to put the the new filter on right then while we're waiting for all the oil to drain out uh, a little bit of concurrent activity can uh, can go on what we're going to do is we are going to take the lid off the air box just a few screws all the way around pop them in the pocket so they don't get lost before it drops pop that down to one side it's the the hose that goes to the flapper is um, still connected I'm not gonna bother disconnecting it because I don't I don't I really don't need to so here we go is the there's a filter old one as you can see and what I'm replacing it with is this one K&N um, you'll see me uh, do a video where I clean this um, this uh, K&N filter so this is all ready to go uh, back into the bike now what is worth doing while you're in here is if it's full of like dust and debris and leaves and on the inside of the air box as well now's the time to do that get it all out uh, but as you can see uh, mine's in pretty good uh, pretty good state I did, I did have it off not long ago when we did the uh, cam chain uh, the cam chain tensioner replacement so um, I did have it off then so anyway to fit it really really easy pop her in make sure that She's seated. This lip here sits into the, the groove all the way around the airbox. Just make sure that's in, because if it's not, you'll struggle to get the airbox lid back on. And not only that, you won't have a good seat. So there we are, that's that. Pop the airbox lid back on. I'm gonna get the first of the screws at the front in position, because it's quite awkward to get to that one. This is all the cabling for the heated grips. And then just ensure that it's seated all the way round and that you haven't got it on, on the squiff. All right, that looks good. So let's get the screwdriver back out and tighten that screw. Good idea to get them all in before you tighten them all down. That way you know that they're locating okay. Be interested to see if there's a difference in the induction noise uh, on the bike with the K&N fitted. Obviously there is a uh, difference in the sound that this bike makes because I've got the flapper mod and the snorkel removed on this. So that does make a difference, especially when the uh, when the VTEC steps in. Um, there is a really distinctive growl from this engine, which I actually quite like. I find it quite addictive actually. All right, that's all the screws in. So let's tighten them all down. And there we go. Right, that is the air filter replaced. So by now, uh, I would expect all the oil to be out of the sump and hopefully it stopped dripping. So we can go back to that stage and um, refit a new filter. Right then, um, we're pretty much there with the oil. I've uh, given the, uh, the exhaust a little bit of a wipe, but I'll give it another wipe once I've got the filter on and everything's um, buttoned up. Now, oil filter, I've gone for a high flow one on uh, on this occasion, the one that came off is actually also a high flow filter. Um, obviously HF204, HF204, so let's make sure we get the uh, 
the right one, which we have. Okay, so prior to uh, prior to fitting the filter, what we need to do is just prep it slightly. Now, this is the oil I'm using, Silkley Super 4 uh, 1040. Uh, this is this oil specification is recommended for this bike. Um, I believe. I believe that Honda actually recommended um, 1030 from 2006 onwards, I think it was, for this model of bike. Um, but obviously this is a 2003, so we're uh, running the 1040. Not that it really matters too much. Um, I'm not sure you've noticed the difference. Okay, brand new filter. It's got a little, um, it's got a little cover over the top of it. And these high flow filters do come with a little bit of lube on the uh, on the O-ring itself, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a film of clean engine oil all around it, just to be certain. Okay, now what we've got to do is spin the filter on onto its lug. Now, quite often what I do with these filters is I just turn them by hand until I can't physically turn them anymore. Now, there is a torque spec for, for this filter from Honda, so I'll use it. Um, it's, in this occasion, 26 Newton meters. When I get the, uh, when I get the torque wrench on. Come on, get on. It's a bit awkward getting the uh, getting the torque wrench on the tool. Let me just turn the tool around slightly and try again. And there we go. Right, we're on. Now we don't have a lot of room to move in here because of the. Uh, coolant hoses and the exhaust but we should manage okay so I'm getting about half a half a span of flats turn right it's starting to tighten up against the crankcase now there we go and that is all it needed I didn't need that much at all really okay now let's get the tool off yeah these these coolant hoses here make it incredibly difficult but we're on and we're good okay here's the uh, here's a sump plug old washer let's remove that we don't need that anymore and i've got a new one a little copper one which i have annealed which is why it looks quite dark uh, annealing it makes it nice and soft and pliable so all we need to do is pop it back into the sump screw it up get it up to touch and then we need to torque it in position and the torque set in for the sump plug is 29 newton meters there we go 29 newton meters and there we go there we are all right don't over tighten it because it's only a soft alley and you will strip it out and then you're gonna to have to affect an uh, affect a repair you don't want to have to do that so okay what I'm going to do, now I've got the uh, the oil filter on and the plug in, I'm just going to clean up all of this oil using some wipes and then we'll be good to move on to the next stage. Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the filter on, the sump plug in, what we need to do is add engine oil. Now, the, uh, the capacity uh, of oil that this bike takes um, when you do uh, an oil filter change is 3.1 litres, I believe. 
Uh, I'd have to check the book, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three litres in. Now, this is quite important, and a lot of people make this mistake, uh, and I say it quite often on the Facebook groups, where people have said that the, uh, the reading in the sight glass is different um, when they check compared to when they checked last time. Now, the oil level on this bike is supposed to be checked when the engine is warm. Now, that's very, very important, so remember that, please, um, and you won't go wrong. So, warm the engine up, get it up to operating temperature, and then check the oil level with the engine stopped. Um, and, and that will give you the correct um, the correct reading. Okay, so anyway, moving on. What I do, I like to, instead of trying to pour it out of this bottle into the engine and getting it everywhere, uh, you can use a funnel obviously, but I find the um, use of these jugs to be quite, uh, quite good because it's got a nice little spout um, which allows it to be poured into, uh, into the engine without with very, very little spillage. Um, so what I've got here, that is three liters. Three liters, just there. So what I'll do is close that up, put my spout on and go around to the other side and start topping her up. Okay, top the engine oil up, Let's pop the filler cap off pop that to one side. There is a little seal in there, make sure you don't lose that. But what I'll do, I'll take it off and put it on the cap. Take the lid off my oil bottle and pop that into the case. And here we go, we, we can pour away. And as you can see, I'm not spilling a drop. As I said before, I'm gonna put three liters in Let it all uh, let it all drain down. And then what I'll do, I'll fire the bike up once we've finished all the other service elements. Get it up to operating temperature and then I'll check the level and then I'll top up as required. But at least by only putting three litres in, not 3.1, I'm not risking overfilling it and having to remove oil. So what I'll do I'll leave it at three litres for now because it's easier to add oil than it is to take oil out. And there we go. And that is that. Right, that's three litres of oil into the bike. Now, obviously, they give you different um, they give you different um, oil levels depending upon whether you just drop the oil, whether you've changed the filter, and also it will actually take even more oil if you've done a complete engine rebuild. Now, obviously, that goes without saying; it's it's fairly fairly obvious. So just be be aware of the the differences and um, adjust your oil level accordingly. Um, obviously if you look at the service manual, it does. I think I think every other oil change it specifies that you change the filter they cost pence you know in the grand scheme of things compared to uh compared to the cost of a, an engine anyway so why you wouldn't replace it at every every service interval um is beyond me anyway right next thing we're going to do is we are going to change the spark plugs okay then spark plugs spark plugs are a bit of a pain uh to get to on this bike um however on the plus side on this bike you don't need to remove the airbox like you do on uh straight fours and and such like now the uh the vfr vtech uses laser iridium plugs um the that's the model imr 9b 9h i believe you can also use imr 8b 9h but i would have to check the manual for that but that um if you go if you buy that model uh that part number you won't go wrong okay so obviously being a V4, there's two at the back and there's two at the front. Now one's there, that is the coil, the coil stick there. The other one is in the same place, but just here. And the other two are accessed just behind the front wheel. I'll do the two rear ones first, um, and then we'll do the, uh, the front two uh, last. Now, earlier on I talk, talked about um, moving the tank. What I'm gonna do is this. As you can see, 
she's nice and secure, she's not going anywhere. And what I've done is I've just protected the screen and any plastics and the tank itself with this nice thick um, wash rag. And as you can see, we can get right into both the coil sticks in order to be able to remove them. Now this, this hose here is just a breather hose and this is, these two are the connections that go to the fuel pump on the tank. So that hose there will just move out of the way. And this one here for the pair system um, can just be, uh, can just be uh, disconnected and moved out of the way in order to get the coil sticks out. So if we pop the clip up and there we go. As you can see, we've got perfect access to both sticks. So let me grab some tools and we'll, uh, we'll whip them out. Okay then, so first thing we've got to do is we've got to remove the coils. Now, we disconnect each of the plugs go into the coil sticks and push them to one side just in case of pushing on that little clip there. You can hear it clicking. If you push it, you'll see it'll pop off fairly easily. It's not nothing too difficult. And then we've just got to remove these two bolts, one on each one. So. That's the first bolt. Pop that to one side. And second bolt. Pop that to one side. And then the coils just pull out like so. One. Two. And as you can see, they're in pretty decent condition. They look pretty steady. Right. Now, down the wells, as you can see, they're quite deep. So you will need um, an extension in order to get into those and a spark plug tool. If you haven't got a proper spark plug tool, what you can do is you can use a normal deep socket if you've got one, but then you'll need a magnet in order to get them out because what the spark plug tool does is it's got a little rubber bung uh, just inside it. I don't think you're gonna be able to see that. Uh, down there but as you can see there's a little tiny hole and what that does is as you push it down on the spark plug the rubber grips the plug so when you undo it you can withdraw the plug obviously now what we're going to do pop it on you, you, it takes a little push to get it on but we're on there and then just undo it shouldn't be overly tight they are uh, they are torqued up I can't remember the spec off, uh, specification off the top of my head but obviously I will check the manual um, when it comes to putting the new ones in again this is something you don't over tighten make sure that you torque them to the specifications because if you do cross thread them you're gonna have a pain because um, then you need to uh, then you need to obviously affect a repair on your head now these uh, again these iridium plugs uh, these are denso ones uh, so the part number is slightly different, VNH27Z. Um, Denso ones aren't actually listed in the um, as a recommended spec for um, this bike, but the NGK ones are listed as a recommended plug. There's probably no difference, um, however, uh, at all. But um, yeah, the uh, the uh, the tip of the plug itself. Um, basically, what they say um, in the in the manual is that when the, uh, if the gap's opening up, instead of gapping them, you're supposed to actually replace the plug because what's actually happening happening is, is the, the, uh, the, um, the, the terminal end um, is actually effectively being eaten away. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, um, I, think the, uh, I think the factory spec is um, 0.9 of a millimeter, the gap uh, in, the, in, the, in the plug itself. So anyway, yeah, pop that to one side, get the, uh, get the other one out. Now, these Iridium plugs themselves are quite expensive and um, I do see people talking uh, on the groups about how they found them for like really, really cheaply. Um, something to be aware of is that there's a lot of fakes um, going around. Um, especially on sites like eBay and the like. Um, as a general rule, I like to think that if something's too good to be true, it usually is. Now, the, uh, they're, they're uh, quite expensive and they, they retail at around 14 or 15 pounds each, uh, generally, or in that ballpark figure. So if you're getting these um, 
iridium plugs for five quid each i would question their authenticity um, but yeah these um the, the plugs themselves actually don't look too bad at all they look pretty uh they do look pretty good um, but obviously i'm replacing them anyway so now um what i want to do is fit each one into its well There you go, there's, there's a brand new one. As you can see, it looks a lot shinier. Um, they'll, they'll come pre-gapped. I won't need to, uh, I won't need to uh, check them. They'll, uh, they'll be good. Um, generally, it's only if they've been smashed into the floor or dropped that, they, uh, that you can uh, have a problem. But um, one thing I do want to point out, and I see this quite often as well, is people tend to put um, a smear of anti-seize on, on the threads of these. Absolutely no need whatsoever. Um, this, this little washer here, is a crush washer and if I compare that to the one on the old plug you can see this one's quite flat that's because obviously this one's been talked into the cylinder head and it's crushed so that that there is obviously to create a seal a, not only a gas proof seal um, but also a waterproof seal um, from the elements so if your if your spark plugs are actually corroding into your head that's because this seal has been compromised now obviously they're dissimilar metals you've got steel and aluminium with an electrolyte you will you will get corrosion but you shouldn't get any corrosion because you shouldn't get any water past this generally you're probably going to experience that if you've removed the plug and then refitted the old plug um because obviously you'll have crushed the seat these are like a one-shot deal these washers um so that's worth bearing in mind don't put uh, anti-seize on there because these are torqued into the cylinder head and you do actually affect the torque by using an anti-seize compound so <laughs> if you want to by all means your bike do what you wish but i don't secondly um when it comes to fitting them get them in by finger first um don't get tools on them because again you'll just cross thread it or you could potentially cross thread it should i say um just get them up to touch by finger and then what we'll do is we'll use the tools um afterwards to uh to get them off and there's the first one in. Right, that's one. Let's get the next one in. Done enough waffling on about spark plugs, I think. Uh, again, a lot of it is my opinion. Um, I'm entitled to one. If you want to use anti-seize and, and, and such and such, then by all means, do whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I just prefer not to. And one thing that does like to happen is the uh, the tool likes to stick to the spark plug instead. You just have to give it a little lean. You just lean on it to one side to, to get it off. Right, okay. They're both in. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the manual. I'm just gonna check the torque spec uh, and then we'll get these torqued in. Right then, spark plugs, 12 newton meters. Not a lot, but um, obviously it's about as much as not over tightening them, this is about making sure that they're done up enough. So I've set the torque wrench to 12 newton meters. Bearing in mind, all you're really trying to do here is just compress that little crush washer. And there we go. That's the first one. Just pull the tool out. And the second one. There we go and that is the rear ones done so what we've got to do next is just refit the coil sticks doesn't really matter if you mix them up they're the same they're identical in every way Just give them a little nip, and there we go. All we're going to do now: reconnect 
the plugs for the coils. Just click them in. And there we are, that's that done. Let's pop the pipe work back on for the pair system. Put that clip back down. Right, that is the back one's done. All we've got to do now is put the tank back on because we don't need it up anymore. We've done everything we needed to do under the tank. So all I've got to do is make sure that I can reconnect the overflow and the breather and the two electrical connections to the um, to the fuel pump. So what I'll do, I'll get that back on, I won't bore you with that. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll move on to the front two uh, spark plugs. Right then, tank is back on and bolted down as, as it should be. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on to the front two um, plugs. Now here they are, you can see them quite, uh, quite easily and they're fairly accessible. And just like the first, uh, the first two that we did, just pop the, uh, Pop the two connectors off and move that out to one side. Obviously you can't get them wrong because that one won't reach to that one. So <laughs> you, know, you know which one goes to which. Okay, so on the rear, on the front ones, um, it's just a 10 mil bolt holding each one in. Whereas on the, uh, on the uh, rear ones, it was an Allen headed bolt. Pop the bolt off of each one the uh, this one here the right hand side as you sit on the bike um, as you look at it um, does have a cable clamp for the two cables that go to the uh, coils so bear that in mind when we come to reassemble And there you go, as you can see, there's the cable clump. And now, we can pop both the sticks out. Plenty of room under there to do it. Pop them down to one side. As you can see, these ones here do get blasted by, um, obviously, all the road grime and, and what have you. So they're, uh, they're quite significantly dirty compared to the rear ones. Okay, pop them down. And what we are going to do next is get our spark plug tool, drop her in, drop her in, make sure it's on and undo them. As I've said before, they're only done up to uh, 12 newton meters anyway, so they're not too tight. And there we go. One. And two, and there we go. All right, let's pop them down to one side and get our new ones. Fit it into the tool, just like so. And then offer them up to the spark plug well. And just tighten them down by hand. That's 
That's one. And and two. Okay, got me torque wrench right here. Not a lot of room, what I'm gonna do is just turn the wheel. And there we go, that's that one talked in. As you can see, the little tool wants to stay on the spark plug. So it's just a case of giving it a little wiggle. Just to get her off, and there we go, got it. Talk in the last one. Not a lot of room to swing your torque wrench around in there, but just enough. I think we're there. Yeah, there we go. And that's them done. Let's get the tool off. And there we are, right. Coils back into their respective locations. Just pop them on. Same with that one. And then get the bolts on. Remembering that one's got the little cable clamp on it. And they're up to touch, and then just oh, let's get the ratchet the right way around. Nipped up. And there we go. All right, let's tuck the cable back behind the cable clamp. and then plug them back in. There's the first one, and the second one. And that is that job done. All the spark plugs are placed. Okay, so, so far we've done the oil, the oil filter, the air filter, and all four spark plugs. The last thing that I want to do um, today is drop all the coolant out and refresh that. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay then, so to change the coolant, what we need to do first is obviously drain the old stuff out. Now, on this particular bike, it's slightly unusual compared to others because there's actually two drains. One is on the water pump cover, and it's that one just there with my finger on it. So what we'll do, we'll crack that one off. 
and we should get coolant out. What we may need to do is just pop the cap off the radiator in order to assist it because obviously what it'll do is it'll cause a bit of an airlock. So there's one out. What I'll do, I'll pop the cap off the rad. We should, there we go. We should get some more. Whoa. <laughs> As you can see, that was quite a difference. It fired across the uh, fired across the garage when I took the uh, when I took the rad cap off. So um, bear that in mind. What I'll do, I'll go grab some rags, clear up this mess, and then we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the next one. Okay. Right, the, there is another drain, and it's this one just here that I've got my finger on, and it's just above, basically just above the, above the oil filter, behind the starter motor cabling. Um, this bolt here, what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna move my drain pan underneath. Hopefully I won't lose too much. Um, what I'm probably gonna be better off with, actually, in this case is a 10 mil spanner. When I find it, I'll put it down somewhere. There we go, right, just, Crack this bolt off. And this is just the cylinder drain. If you don't remove this one, all that happens is you've got old coolant still sitting up in there in the water jacket around the cylinder. Or around the front cylinder, should I say. And there we go. And as you can see, we're getting all the coolant that's sitting in the cylinder. We've got a little dribble more out of the uh, fuel pump, uh, fuel pump, water pump cover as well. We've got a little bit out of there as well. So be mindful of that. Okay. As you can see on each of these bolts, there's a little copper washer. So I'm going to replace those with brand spanking new ones. And I reckon we're about done with that. Okay, let me go grab some washers, give them an anneal, and then we'll get these bolts back in. Right then, I'll start with the front one. Got my new washer. Pop that on the bolt. And then just get the bolt back in. It's a bit awkward with this... Um, Start a motor cable and in the way, I won't lie. And obviously being upside down as well, it makes it even more awkward. Very, very inconvenient place to to have it. It's quite hard to get your fingers in, but perseverance is key. There we go, I've got it. Finally, I'm not left-handed even remotely. Manage it with my right hand, okay. Screw it all the way up to touch, and then I'll just give it a little nip up with the spanner. Okay, that's all the way up to all the way up to touch. Sweet with the spanner doesn't need to be ridiculously tight. Don't lean on it. All you're doing is there we go, and I'm happy with that. Okay, what I need to do, obviously just clean off all this coolant before I fire up the bike. Um, but uh, other than that, that one's done. Okay, next one. Get this one back in here. Again, a new washer. Again, don't 
don't lean on it. Just give it a little nip up, and there we go, that's that one on. Right, before we can fill it up, last thing we gotta do is empty the expansion bottle, or the reserve tank, I think Honda like to call it. Um, we'll call it the expansion bottle because that's exactly what it's there for. One bolt at the top, and another one at the side. I think that's it, just those two. cap off and just empty it out just like so and there we are right things look a little bit slimy in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it off and give it a good clean out why not okay what I'll do I'll bring you back once I've uh, given this a good clean and then we'll uh, we'll look at refilling the system okay so we've completely emptied the system um, both the front uh, drain bolts and the one on the water pump we've removed and we've allowed all the coolant that's in there out what we need to do next is we need to top up the system so um, what I've got here is good quality uh, ethyl glycol antifreeze made 50-50 mix with um, deionized water. Don't use tap water, especially if you live in a really hard water area, because um, all you'll do is you'll just fur up the, uh, the water galleries in your engine and reduce performance or potentially cause damage. So make sure you use deionized water, that way you're not putting all the, um, all the horrible uh, minerals into, into your engine. Uh, yeah, as I said, 50-50 mix, uh, and we should be good to go. Now, now what we need to do, in order to fill it up, use a, use a funnel, otherwise you'll end up getting it everywhere. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to top the system up until it's level with the top, top of the filler neck. Um, it should take approximately, I think it's 2.9 litres, uh, if memory serves me correctly, um, to fill the entire system. So, take your time, you don't need to rush. Um, just top it up until such time as the level is right at the top of the filler neck. What I'll do, I'll keep doing this because it'll take a, it'll take a few minutes to get it all in and then what I'll do, I'll bring it back in when, uh, when we're at the top of the filler neck. Okay, so we're topped up to the top of the filler neck as you can see, I can't get any more in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to top up the uh, the reserve tank or the expansion tank um, up to the max line, uh, which is what obviously the, the manual tells you to do. Bear in mind, there's two radiators on this, uh, one on each side, and I've only put in about a litre and a half of coolant. So I'm fairly confident that the other radiator hasn't got any in it yet. What we'll do in a minute though, we will start the engine. Uh, and I'll, um, there's a little process with a few blips of the throttle and what we should do is that allow that will allow the water pump to push the coolant through the system and it will also put it into the other radiator and then we'll stop the engine and we'll top up as required so what i'll do i'll uh, top up the um the expansion tank first and then uh, we'll fire up the bike um, when we fire up the bike obviously what we want to do is several things firstly we want to make sure we've not got any uh, oil leaks we also want to check for coolant leaks uh, anywhere where we've disturbed and obviously make sure that it's running okay because we've changed the plugs as well um checking the uh, oil level the oil level down here um currently sitting pretty much bang in between the lower and the upper mark um that's not too bad you know i can live with that however um what i where, where i want it is obviously at the upper mark now at the moment the, the oil filter itself hasn't got any oil in it so the level will definitely drop um, but remember obviously what i said earlier on that the, uh, the, the the oil level on this bike is to be checked when the engine is warm. So we'll obviously do that at the same time. So let me uh, fill the expansion tank and then we'll follow her up. And there we go, there's the upper line. 
and as you can see we've got the cooling up to there um what we'll do once we've started the engine and we've got the uh, the cooling system pushing fluid uh, pushing the coolant through the engine um we will have to revisit and top up as required um, but for now what we need to do is start the engine and uh, let it get up to operating temperature Right then, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the engine and I'm going to let it idle for about two to three minutes. Uh, this is going to serve two purposes. Firstly, obviously, it's going to uh, settle the oil level to the correct um, reading so that I can then top it up as required. Uh, and secondly, what it's going to do is it's going to bleed any air out the, uh, out the coolant system because obviously there is going to be air in there because I've drained all the coolant out. Most probably, this radiator on this side is going to be absolutely full of air. So I'm going to let it idle for two to three minutes. Once it's... Um, uh, once it's been running for two to three minutes, I'm going to snap the throttle a few times. And what that's going to do is it's um, going to speed up the, uh, the the water pump, pushing the coolant around the system. What we should expect to see as well is when the uh, when the thermostat finally opens, this level will drop. Um, and obviously that will be the coolant then circulating it through the radiator as well. So here we go. Let's um, start the bike up. Well, I'll, obviously it'll be quite loud. So what we'll do, we'll let it idle and then I'll bring you back in when, uh, when we're ready to... Um, when we're ready to move on. Okay, so. Right, I'll just leave it for a few minutes, let it get up to temperature, and then we'll bring you back.
the uh, thermostat is finally opened and as you can see the level has dropped significantly so what we'll do now is stop the engine We'll stop the engine. As you can see, you do lose quite a bit of coolant during this process, hence the reason why I've got the pan underneath. There's a little bit on the floor, but we, we're not too concerned. Uh, obviously, yeah, as, as part of the process, you will lose a little bit of coolant. But um, what we need to do next is obviously allow the engine to cool, um, and then we'll, we'll top up again to the top of the filler neck, and we'll check the uh, expansion tank on the other side, and um, top up as required up to the upper, le uh, upper level. Right. As I said before, what we do want to do is we do want to check the uh, the oil level um, in the sight glass window. So we'll let the uh, we'll let the oil all drain back down at the sump, um, and then we'll check that um, in about uh, in about a minute's time. Uh, we'll uh, we'll give that a good look. Right then, what we're going to do now is just top up the oil to the required level. So it's at the upper line in the sight glass. just adding oil all the time looking at the side glass making sure we don't overfill and touch more And there we are, as you can see, the oil level is at the upper line. So I'm perfectly happy with, uh, with the oil now. So we can uh, put that one to bed. All I need to do next is um, top up the coolant back up to the top of the filler neck. As you can see, it's taken a fair bit. And there we go, we're back up. Right, all we need to do now, put the cap back on and then uh, we can uh, get all the plastics back on. So that's the uh, that is the job done, start to finish. We've changed the, uh, we've changed the oil, changed the filter, changed the coolant, changed the plugs, and also um, fit the can and air filter. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that it's uh, it's had a good service, and it'll be uh, it'll be alright for another year. So anyway, um, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Um, don't forget to leave a comment in the uh, in the comments below, and I'll endeavour to do uh, to uh, get back to you. Thank you very much, guys. See you all again for the next one. Bye-bye now.